Today we're going to be continuing our study of inequalities with Module 9, Lesson 7, where we're going to be using this Plinkert activity to decide whether or not different numbers are going to be valid solutions of this inequality. So right here, we've got this, which is absolutely useless to you, but we do have this, which is the very first question. Now, we're going to go over four of these questions. The rest of them, you are going to have in an online activity to the quiz that you can take to make sure you understand how they all work. So what I did, because I'm lazy, is I jumped over here and I copied out each of my qu questions or each of my equations and inequalities that I had here and then prepared to actually substitute answers in. So what they want us to do is test these numbers to figure out which of these numbers are going to be valid solutions here. And they give us choices so I'm going to focus on these choices which are the same thing they have here. The first choice is going to be 0 plus 2 and 1 half is equal to 6. Well, that's just give me, going to give me 2 and 1 half is equal to 6, which we know is false. So that one's not going to work. So now we can take and put a big old X through A because we know A is not a valid answer. The next possible answer is going to be 3 and 1 half, where we take 3 and 1 half plus 2 and 1 half. Well, 3 plus 2 is going to give me 5. 1 half plus 1 half is going to give me 1, which is equal to 6. So we would say that 5, 6 does equal 6. And so ding, 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 B is going to be our correct answer. Now on this problem, we have an equals, which means there can only be one solution. We have found our one solution, so we're done with this one. And now we're going to take and go on and try the others, the next problem. But the next problem is going to be a little bit more challenging because it is an inequality. And since it is an inequality, we have to test all the answers, at least up to a certain point. So here they give us all, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible answers that we're going to need to check here. And I'm just going to start working through them because once I prove that one answer in a solution set is wrong, I know that whole solution set is wrong. So the first number I'm going to put in is zero. And I'm going to say that zero plus two and a half is going to be two and one half, which is less than six. That's going to be a true statement. All right, well, let's try another one. Let's try one plus two and a half. That's going to give me three and a half, which is less than six. That's going to be a true statement. Well, let's try three and a half then. So three and one half plus two and one half. Whoops, I put that all in the wrong place, didn't I? So I'm going to put three and one half here. Well, the three plus two, like we did before, is five. One half plus one half is one is less than six, which gives me six is less than six. That is a false statement. So we know that A can't work. Now we just tested that, that the value for B. So we know that B cannot work. And we look and see right here, C, there's three, C and a half, um, three and one half again. So we know that, excuse me, not C, but D, D cannot work either. That means that C has to be our correct answer. And if you were to test each one of these three points, the only one we've not checked yet is going to be the two. So if I was to go back and test that two right here, this would end up giving me a two plus two and a half, which is four and one half, which is less than six. So we have proven that C is going to be our correct answer. Now let's look at the next problem. For this one, we have and the same thing, only now it has an or equal to symbol on it. So we have to take and check all these again. Now, there's a possibility that you may have more than one valid set of answers here. So we're going to need to check a bunch of these on this one. So for this one, we need to figure out numbers that are going to be less than or equal to 6. So for A, I'm going to start off with the biggest number because if the biggest number proves to be false, then the whole thing's going to be false. So I'm going to take and put in 4 and 1 half, which is going to end up giving me 4 plus 2 is 6. 1 half plus 1 half is 1, which gives me uh, 7 is less than or equal to 6. That is a false statement. So I know that A is gone. I don't see any more four and a halves here, so I can't get rid of any more numbers off of that. Now, we're going to take and try the next one, B, which is three and one half, 
Well, when we add that, 3 plus 2 is 5. 1 half plus 1 half is 1, which that is going to end up giving me 6 is less than or equal to 6, which is a true statement, so we know B can be a good answer. Now let's see what else we're going to have here. For C, I've got 0 plus 2 and a half. Well, that's going to give me 2 and 1 half is less than or equal to equal to 6. That's a true statement, so that's going to work. What if I put the 1 in there? Well, for, if I put 1 right here, then that's going to give me 3 and 1 half is less than or equal to 6. True statement. And if I put the 2 in there, that's going to give me 4 and 1 half, which is less than or equal to 6, which is also a true statement. So, so far, I know that A, that B and C are correct answers. What do you see in D? Well, in D, if you look real close, these parts come from option C, and this part comes from option B. So we know that D is also a correct answer because we've already tested all of them. So in this one, there are three possible answers that are going to be correct. From here, you're going to take and do one more problem together, and then you're going to be on your own. Now, we're looking for an equal to. So we've got to find the one answer that's going to work. So I could take and put in 4 times 0 equals 42. Well, that would mean 4 equals 42. I'm sorry, not 4. 0 equals 42 because any number times 0 is going to end up being 0. That's a false statement, so we know that that one's not going to work. Next, we're going to take and do 4 times 10 and 1 half is equal to 42. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm break this down to 4 times 10. That's going to give me 40. And then 4 times 1 half, that's saying 1 half of 4, that's 2. So I have 40 plus 42, which is equal to 42. And there I have my balanced answer, so I have my correct answer. What are you going to be doing from here? You're going to be working all of these different problems on your own. But you're going to be doing it as a Canvas activity where you're going to be able to check your answers as you go and find out which ones are right and which ones are wrong. If you get it incorrect, you need to go back and do it because you can retake it as many times as you want. But whatever grade you settle on is a grade that's going in the gradebook. Good luck. I look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow.